Ancient Egypt, a land of majestic monuments, grand temples, and deep spiritual beliefs. For thousands of years, the people of Egypt looked to the gods to guide and protect them, and among these gods, none were as powerful or as revered as Amun. Who was Amun? How did he rise from a local deity of Thebes to become one of the most significant gods in the entire Egyptian pantheon? To understand Amun's incredible journey, we must first look at his name. The word Amun means the Hidden One, representing a deity that is both present and unseen, a mysterious force that operates behind the scenes of creation, life, and death. Amun wasn't always at the forefront of Egyptian worship. In fact, he began as a relatively minor god of Thebes, a city far less prominent than Memphis or Heliopolis during Egypt's early dynasties. But as Thebes grew in power, so did Amun's influence. Through a combination of political changes and divine favor, Amun became the chief god of the powerful Theban rulers. These kings attributed their victories and successes to Amun, and in return, they lavished his temples with wealth and prestige. Over time, Amun was no longer just the god of Thebes, he became the king of the gods. In the next chapters of this story, we'll explore Amun's rise to dominance, his deep ties to Egyptian politics, and how his worship influenced not only Egypt, but also its surrounding regions. To start with, Amun was a humble and largely overlooked deity, worshipped in the small city of Thebes. Thebes itself was a minor player during the Old Kingdom. While cities like Memphis and Heliopolis flourished as centers of power and religion, Thebes remained on the fringes of the political landscape. But everything was about to change. Amun at this time was not a powerful god. He was a god of air and wind, representing the unseen forces that shaped the world. His name, meaning the Hidden One, reflects this role as the invisible, mysterious energy behind creation and life. Though he was unseen, Amun's power was always there, present in the air that people breathed and in the wind that carried life-sustaining water across the Nile Delta. Amun's role as the god of air made him a protector of the unseen realms of existence, the wind that can be felt, but never seen. In Egyptian creation myths, Amun was linked to the act of creation itself. As the Hidden One, he played a key role in forming the universe, helping to shape the cosmos from the chaotic, watery abyss that existed before the world. According to one version of Egyptian mythology, Amun was part of the Ogdoad, a group of eight primordial deities that existed before the dawn of time. These gods represented the chaotic forces from which the universe was born. Amun, in this ancient context, was the force of invisibility and the mysterious air, which along with his counterpart Amunet, helped shape creation. In the chaos before creation, these eight gods personified elemental forces. Amun and his partner Amunet were the embodiment of the hidden, unseen aspects of the universe, the mysteries that lay beyond human understanding. As Thebes grew in power during Egypt's Middle Kingdom, so too did Amun's prominence. The rulers of Thebes, eager to legitimize their authority, aligned themselves with Amun, slowly transforming him from a local god to a national deity. Temples were built in his honor, and priests began expanding Amun's mythology. As his power grew, so too did his temples, which would soon become some of the most significant religious centers in all of Egypt. Despite his growing prominence, Amun retained his mysterious nature. He was the god who acted in secret, who moved through the unseen and gave life to all things, but remained hidden from the eyes of mortals. This duality, both present and invisible, made Amun uniquely powerful among the Egyptian gods. As the Middle Kingdom of Egypt dawned, a small but determined city began to emerge from the shadows. Thebes. Once a minor settlement on the banks of the Nile, Thebes was poised to become the heart of a new Egyptian empire. And at the center of this transformation was the god Amun. The rise of Amun is inseparable from the rise of Thebes itself. As Thebes grew in military and political strength, its rulers sought a powerful symbol to legitimize their rule and unify their people. They turned to Amun, the hidden god. This elevated him from a local deity to the divine protector of their city. In the eyes of Theban kings, Amun became not just a god, but a source of royal legitimacy. His invisible hand was believed to guide their decisions, and his favor was seen as crucial to their success. As Thebes expanded its influence, so too did the cult of Amun. 
One of the most significant symbols of Amun's growing power was the Temple of Karnak. Situated near the heart of Thebes, this temple would become the spiritual and political epicenter of the Egyptian world. Construction began in earnest during the Middle Kingdom, and the temple grew into the largest religious complex in Egypt. Pharaohs poured vast wealth into expanding the temple, each ruler seeking to honor Amun with ever more impressive structures and offerings. In return, they believed that Amun granted them divine favor, securing their reign and guiding them to victory in battle. As Amun's influence spread, he began to absorb the identities of other local gods. Two of the most important deities merged with Amun during this time were Montu, the war god of Thebes, and Min, the fertility god. By incorporating Montu's martial prowess, Amun became a god of war, a divine warrior whose will determined the outcomes of battles. And by absorbing Min, Amun also became associated with fertility, ensuring both the prosperity of the land and the continuity of the royal line. The Egyptian pharaohs claimed their military victories were carried out under Amun's will. Before any major campaign, the pharaoh would seek the blessing of Amun, offering lavish tributes to ensure his favor. When victories were won, it was not just the skill of the soldiers or the strategy of the generals that was celebrated. It was Amun who had willed the victory. They were no longer just kings. They were the chosen ones of Amun, his living representatives on earth. And it was under this banner of divine legitimacy that Thebes began to expand its territory, eventually uniting all of Egypt under its rule. The once local god of air and wind was now worshipped across the entirety of Egypt, with temples in his honor springing up from the Nile Delta to Nubia. The growth of Amun's priesthood during this time was extraordinary. As Thebes grew richer and more powerful, the temples of Amun amassed great wealth. The priests, now influential advisors to the pharaohs, controlled vast estates and resources, making the Temple of Amun a political and economic powerhouse. Through war, fertility, and kingship, Amun had solidified his place as the supreme deity of Egypt. The once hidden god of Thebes now stood as the mightiest force in the Egyptian cosmos, guiding the fates of both rulers and commoners alike. Throughout Egypt's long history, two gods stood at the center of its divine order. Amun, the hidden force behind existence, and Ra, the sun god, whose daily journey across the sky symbolized life, death, and rebirth. But in time, by merging Amun with Ra, the Egyptians unified the visible and invisible aspects of the universe, creating a god of unparalleled cosmic significance. Amun-Ra became more than just a god of the air or the sun. He was now the supreme ruler of both the physical and spiritual worlds. He was the hidden force behind creation, and the visible power that gave life to all through the light of the sun. Amun-Ra's influence stretched across the heavens and the earth. His power was considered limitless, and he was worshipped as the divine king who reigned over the universe. In this new form, Amun-Ra became Egypt's supreme deity, embodying both the majesty of kingship and the eternal cycle of life, death, and rebirth. It had practical significance in the lives of the Egyptian people. Amun-Ra's worship became central to Egyptian religious life, and grand festivals were held in his honor, including the Opet Festival. The Opet Festival, one of the most important annual events in ancient Egypt, celebrated the renewal of the king's divine power and his connection to Amun-Ra. During the festival, statues of Amun-Ra, his consort Mut, and their son Khonsu were paraded from the Karnak Temple to the Luxor Temple. This journey symbolized the god's blessing on the pharaoh and his continued rule over the land. It was a time of unity and renewal. As Amun-Ra blessed the king, so too did he bless the people, ensuring the prosperity of the land and the success of Egypt in war and peace. Through his merger with Ra, Amun's role expanded far beyond that of a local deity. Now, as Amun-Ra, he was worshipped throughout the entire Egyptian empire. His temples grew more opulent, his priests more powerful, and his festivals more grand. Pharaohs proudly proclaimed their divine right to rule through Amun-Ra, and even military victories were attributed to his will. In the coming years, Egypt would face internal upheaval that threatened even the most powerful of gods. A new pharaoh, Akhenaten, would attempt to upend the entire religious system, rejecting Amun-Ra in favor of a single god, Aten. Thank you for joining us in learning about Amun, the Hidden One. See you.
next time.